We are in a series this summer. How many of you are liking the hymn series? Yes. All right. Well, we have, a, we have another hymn that we're going to talk about today. This is the eighth hymn that we've talked about this summer. Today, I want to talk to you about the very popular hymn, I'll Fly Away. Yeah. Some of you are excited about this, I know. Some of the rest of you might argue that this gospel song really shouldn't be uh, classified as a hymn. Well, in some of our hymn books, it's there. Some of them, it's not. Somebody pointed out to me today that in the classic Lutheran hymn book that you have back there, it's not in there. But there's a lot of hymn books, trust me, that it is in there. Uh, I would rely on that fact because I know all the churches that I grew up in, it was always there. Here's another fantastic statistic. I'll Fly Away is said to be the most recorded gospel song of all time with more than 5,000 versions sung by artists all over the world selling millions of copies. Think of that. There's even an I'll Fly Away Foundation. Yes, there is such a thing. An I'll Fly Away Foundation that keeps track of all these things. Now, I'll Fly Away, i got to tell you, has a very personal history for me as well. When I was in fourth grade, that'd be nine years old, my family of five moved from Barberton, Ohio, to the village next door, Norton, Ohio. At the time, in Barberton, I had been taking trombone lessons because Barberton offered this to fourth graders, but Norton did not. But my dad was in an arrangement with the music store that as a youngster I didn't understand, but some of you parents understand. So uh, my dad, who'd been paying monthly payments on the trombone, of which I now had no need of, dad took the trombone back to the music store, and he asked what he might be able to exchange it for. The man behind the counter (laughs) pointed to this old broken down banjo in the corner, and dad made the trade and began taking banjo lessons. And one of the very first songs that he learned to play on the banjo was this one, I'll Fly Away. Isn't that cool? Now, the only challenge about this, some of you know, uh, my dad cannot sing a lick. It does not stop him from singing. I just want you to know that. But uh, he would always come and get me whenever he wanted to practice a song, and he wanted to practice it a lot. And so either I or my siblings or sometimes all of us would sing I'll Fly Away for hours when I was a kid. That's what I got for trading in the trombone. So I think it would be fun for us just to get started. I think this is one that many of you do know. So let's let's give it a try. So they're just the first. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to our home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. Oh, I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away in the morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I fly away. Kind of want to sing some more, don't you? All right, well, see, this is, this is part of the uh, trick of the sermon, is to make you come back one more. Let's stop for the, with the first verse, we'll come back in the second verse, we'll do, remember, every single week. We're trying to come away with four life lessons that we can learn from these hymns, all right? So here's our first life lesson that we get from the first verse. I'll fly away from drudgery. I'll fly away from drudgery. For this, I take the Psalm 90, verse 17. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us, Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Now, you may know this, 
Maybe you don't. If you don't, you should know this. The Bible has a lot to tell us about work. Here are some of the things that the Bible tells us about work. Our work should be an act of worship to the Lord. That's from Colossians 3.23. That we should work so that we can share with others. That's from Ephesians 4.28. That even our Christian faith should include work. John 6.27. Those who were on the praise team this morning know the truth of that. We did a little bit of work this morning. Yes, Brandy? All right. Number four, that every person should carry their own load and work. That's Galatians 6, 5. That our work provides for our needs, according to Proverbs 12, 11, 24, 13, 4, 14, 23. There's lots of Proverbs about working and eating together. All right. Uh, we learn that even from the beginning... When the newly created Adam and Eve were in Eden, that there was work for them to do. Did you know that? However, when man sinned, the goodness and reward of work took on a negative hardship. We call that negative hardship by another name. We call that drudgery. Yes? Much of our labor is hard. Much of our labor is monotonous. And work, as a result of sin, became a necessary burden and sacrifice in order to provide for our families rather than the original purpose that God had intended, which is joy. Okay? That's what God had in mind. Now, this brings me to the writer of this hymn, his name is Albert Edward Brumley. He was 24 years of age when he wrote I'll Fly Away. He writes later about how he came to write the song that he was picking cotton for his dad in 1929. Now that should put all kinds of images in your head, right? 1929 was the beginning of the Great Depression, right? That's when the economy collapsed and I've never picked cotton, but I can imagine it has to be a really tough, tough job. And he was doing that. And then at the time, to kind of pass the drudgery of the work, he was singing a popular song of the time, which if I had the wings of an angel, and he was singing that wishing that he could fly away, wishing that he could be anywhere other than where he was. He fantasized about being able to fly away from the work of the cotton fields. Anybody here be able to identify, not maybe with the cotton fields, but doing work and you wish you could be anywhere else so you could just kind of fly away. Anybody here do work like that sometime in your life and you realize that? Well, there are so many times in our life that's filled with drudgery. We have to ask ourselves, does this earth somehow not really seem like home? Right? Sometimes... This earth just doesn't seem like home. That surely God must have something better in mind for us. This place just can't be it. And that brings us to Hebrews 13, 14. Great verse. Because it says this, this world is not our home. We are looking forward to our everlasting home in heaven. Anybody here looking forward to that everlasting home in heaven someday? Yes, this, this is exactly what this song is getting at. We can all identify with one, that we live here as foreigners and exiles, according to 1 Peter 2. That this world is not our world, according to 1 John 2. And that three, our citizenship is in heaven, according to Philippians 3. The Bible tells us a lot about this. And we've preached a lot about this. So I think this is a good time to let you be able to sing that next verse and chorus. So sing out. Don't let me sing by myself. When the shadows of this life have gone, I'll fly away. Like a bird from these prison walls have flown, I'll fly away, oh, I'll fly away, oh, glory, 
I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. How many want to keep singing? All right, we'll do it in a little bit. <laughs> Oh, that's just terrible. All right, this brings us to our second point, the second life lesson that I'd like to share with you from this song today, and that is this. I'll, you, we, all, I'll fly away from depression. I'll fly away from depression. We read in Psalm 34, 17 and 18, when the righteous cry for help, The Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Some of you are here this morning and you know the reality of feeling crushed in spirit. This is a good verse for you to remember. You see, because this world is not our home, it's easy to understand how we could then become homesick for our world, (laughs) how we could want to live where right and just living are the order of the day, where the Lord God is worshipped by everyone and everything. And if you're a Christ follower, that's your home, where that happens, not here. And to be honest, Living here can be depressing. Here, we have lots of troubles. Here, we are crushed in spirit sometimes. There are lots of different kinds of depression, I think, that we would want to fly away from. Let me mention two of them to you today. First of all, there is economic depression. This was something that Brumley knew about as he was singing this song. And certainly these, even now, are not the best of times economically. Inflation is at a 40-year high. Your dollar doesn't buy as much as it used to. It appears to be getting worse. Many believe we are already, and I, you know, I'm not going to get into the politics of it. Some say we're already in a recession. Some say we've got to redefine recession, whether or not we soon will be or not. Things are slowing down. Sometimes it seems like to me, I don't know if any of you have uh, stock market retirement funds or not, but if you do, you know, it seems like (laughs) your, your retirement assets are kind of falling off a cliff. I talked to a retiree the week before I wrote this who was very worried about her retirement fund. It was causing her fear and some sleepless nights. She asked me if I could take my pastor hat off for a moment and put my financial planner hat on and have a conversation with her. She wondered if she should just get out. In the lingo of this sermon, she wondered if she should just fly away. The Bible is filled with advice. God is our strength. God is our provider. And for many of us, including me, so I'm not just talking about this one, uh, there's many of us here, we thought that maybe God was providing for us in our retirement accounts. Well, maybe we need to look elsewhere. It's easy to see how we might look forward to a city (laughs) where the pavement is made of gold. And the only light switch needed is the light of our Lord that never goes out. That's economic depression. Let's talk about another kind of depression. Emotional depression. Depression of the mind. Now this kind of depression is even worse because it can affect anyone. No one is immune. For some of us, depression may seem like a matter of just being down sometimes, from sad times or disappointments. But for some of us, depression is a matter of dire physical, and permanent reality called depression, with a capital D. Fortunately, we here at Church Requel have someone among us with some good advice 
about depression. My name is Mary Kay Pierce, and I'm Executive Director of NAMI Richland County. And I just wanted to share a little bit with the church on depression. First of all, depression is very, very common, uh, both in men and women. And most adults will experience a depression sometime in your life. So the thing you need to know is that it can affect your mood, it can affect your thinking, it can also affect your body. So a depression is not like a sadness, one day it's gray outside and then the next day you feel, you feel sad that day, but the next day you're fine. A depression happens over time. You may feel sadness for two weeks at a time and nothing will give you joy. Uh, there's a complete change in your your day-to-day -day mood. You're sad from day in, day, day after day after day, and nothing brings you joy. If you see that happening to you, you should seek help. Um, depression can also affect uh, your thinking. It can affect how well you concentrate. It can affect your decision making. Decision making. It can affect your body too. It may cause way too much sleep, 12 to 16 hours a day, or way too little sleep, two to four hours of sleep. So way too much sleep, way uh, too little sleep. Also, way too much eating can happen, or way too little eating can happen, so it can affect your diet. Um, it can um, affect uh, your day-to-day -day lifestyle, and I guess that's what I want to tell you. when. When the sadness overtakes you and the signs and symptoms overtake you, uh, you can also become very irritable. That's another symptom, irritability, or also uh, increased substance abuse can happen when you're severely depressed. These are a few of the signs that you'll see. But when you see a person fall away from their normal personality that you're used to and they're not able to function in their day-to-day -day living and their work life, that's when you really do need to seek help. Um, and I guess the best advice is you know your loved ones the best. You know their personality, you know their normal activity, and if you see a major change in that personality, please ask your loved one how they're doing and seek help if they need help. And we have great resources here in Richland County available 24-7. We have a crisis line available 24-7. We have walk-in clinics where you can walk in that day and see a therapist. Uh, you can call the NAMI office and get direction on who to turn to. We have several agencies uh, in our community that are there to help a loved one. So please know you're not alone and that there's help available. Thank you. How wonderful it is to have Mary Kay Pierce be part of our <laughs> church. So if you or someone you know is suffering from depression or you think that they might be and you want help, here are a couple of numbers. And I wanted to make sure that you had them big, bold, so you could see it. And these are easy to remember. First of all, there's a 24-7 hotline you can call 419-522-HELP, 522-HELP, that's actually 4357, 419-522-HELP, that's 24-7, there always will be somebody there to answer that and help you if somebody needs help, either you or someone you know who is a loved one. If you want to talk to Mary Kay, she uh, is in the office, you know, 9 to 5 during the day, so you can give her a call. 419-522-NAMI, 419-522-NAMI, that's 6264. Help is available, and we should seek that help. We all need help sometimes. We all need encouragement sometimes, amen? Here's a little known fact about Albert Brumley and his song, I'll Fly Away. So he wrote this song in 1929. You remember the date? At the beginning of the Great Depression, he didn't have any confidence in this song at all. He had no confidence in himself at all. That was pretty typical of people back in that day. In 1931, Brumley met Goldie Edith Schell, and they were married soon after. 
Now, Goldie thought this song was really good and encouraged him to publish it. And the rest is history. Brumley and the rest of the world in the middle of a Great Depression just needed the spark of encouragement. And that spark of encouragement didn't come from Brumley, it came from Goldie. Now here's a question for you. Who might you encourage today that could change the world tomorrow? May not seem like a big deal to you, but you never know how God might use that encouragement. Maybe there's someone that you know needs help. And if you will simply provide that help now, the world could be different tomorrow because of it. All right, let's move on and sing the third verse. How does that sound to you? Yeah, all right, I like this. You're all excited. <laughs> oh, how glad and happy when we meet. I'll fly away. When we kneel at Jesus' precious feet, I'll fly away. Oh, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away in the morning. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. All right, you guys... It's wonderful to sing a song that you all know. All right, that will lead us to our very next point, our very next life lesson. You can see it up there in front of you. I'll fly away from loneliness. I'll fly away from loneliness. How appropriate that the very next verse that we just got done singing connects the dots from depression to how glad and happy when we meet. When we fly away from this world, will we be alone or will we gather together in community? Well, the Bible has a lot to say about that too, does it not? Here's Hebrews 12, 23. You have come to the assembly of God's firstborn children whose names are written in heaven. You have come to the spirits of the righteous ones in heaven who have now been made perfect. You see, there will be a rich community life in heaven. There will be no more loneliness. The Bible talks about the assembly of God's children. Our names are written down. Your name is written down. Do you understand what this means? This past uh, week, Mary Kay and I had the benefit of a few days off. And so we spent a few nights in some hotels in Indiana, and you know how it is when you make a reservation at a hotel, and you, you show up at the hotel, and you kind of wonder, do they have the reservation or not? Do they remember your name or not? Reminds me of the old Seinfeld jokes. You, you know how to take the reservation. It's not hard to take the reservation. Anybody can take the reservation. It's holding the reservation that matters. Can I tell you something? God has held your reservation. Your names are written down. The Bible tells us that if we are Christ follower, that our names have been written down in the only reservation book that will ever matter, the book of life. Revelation 3, 5, Jesus promises us our names will never be blotted out. It's easy to feel like we are all alone here. On planet Earth, it's easy to feel lonely. It's easy to feel isolated. Maybe, maybe even when we are loved by people and by God, and we know that people love us, it's easy to feel alone because we are broken. We don't always feel things right. We just know what we feel. And because of the sin in the world, Hebrews 12, 23 tells us something else very important, that we will be made perfect See, we're not perfect right now. Sometimes we feel things that aren't right, but we will be made perfect. We will feel correctly. The brokenness that we live with here and now will be gone forever. 
We will become the perfect creatures that God originally intended. We'll be able to experience and feel the forever love of God and all those in the assembly of those who also love God like we just cannot do enough right now. And that brings us to our final verse and chorus. Let's sing this one together. Now you're all warmed up. Now you know it. Now you want to sing it. This is what you've been waiting to sing. You can't help yourself. You're just so excited. You've been waiting forever for this particular verse. All right, this is the one you know. So let's sing it. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to a land where joy shall never end. I'll fly away, oh, I'll fly away, oh, glory, I'll fly away in the morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away, oh, I'll fly away, oh, glory, I'll fly away. I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Yeah. I can never sing that last chorus just once, you know? It just wouldn't be right for a gospel song not to repeat the last chorus twice. All right, that leads us to our final lesson today, and that is this, number four. I'll fly away from big word you ready for it entropy or entropy is so big i don't know how to pronounce it <laughs> what is entropy it is for those of you who have taken the science it is the second law of thermodynamics you didn't know you was going to get some science here did you right am i right mr science teacher all right Everything in our universe is in the process of decline. Everything in our universe is in the process of collapse. Ever notice how things just automatically corrode, erode, decay, rust out? How everything, everything just eventually wears out. This isn't just true about your life. This is true about all of life. About all of God's creation. But we're promised, we're promised, a change is coming. We're promised a change is coming. Romans 8, 18 to 21. Sometimes the best preaching you can do comes right out of Scripture. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. And against its will, all creation was subjected to God's curse. But, oh, this is the best button scripture. <laughs> but with eager hope the creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay I'm going to fly away from entropy and so are you one day just as a song promises we will fly away from this misery weary land to a place of glory to a land where joy shall never end and there's nothing at all wrong with borrowing a little of that future joy and experiencing it now. This is what happens to me anyway when we sing, I'll fly away. I think that was what was happening to you a moment ago. Now there are some naysayers who say and accuse Christians who think about this future glory in heaven as always having their head in the clouds. That they are so full of heaven that they're of no earthly good. Now, I completely disagree. 
I believe that it is these very Christians who are so focused on the good news to come that they are the ones who can weather the drudgery of today. These are the Christians who have their hope in the glory to come who can face depression, who can face loneliness. These are the Christians who know that this right now is not how it's always going to be. That there is indeed a day promise. From 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17. Man, we should preach this more often. And not just at funerals. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout. With the voice of the archangel. And with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. We are going to fly away, baby. (laughs) I told you at the beginning how this particular gospel song, this hymn, is so very personal to me. I told you the story of how my dad would ask me to sing it with him as he learned to play the song on his banjo. But there is another reason for me personally that this song is so special. See, my dad has also asked me to sing this song for him at his funeral. Sorry. I wanted this to stay positive because, you know... (laughs) Many of you have prayed with me and shared with me, that day is not far away. And honestly, given this moment, I I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it or not. But one thing I have no doubt of whatsoever, Dad will fly away to heaven. And they won't be handing that boy a little harp. No siree bobber. He'll be getting himself a new banjo. A heavenly banjo. And someday. Someday, I hope to join him with my own heavenly issued ukulele. And together, we'll be singing, I have flown away. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for the privilege that we have of looking at these hymns and reminding ourselves of the promise that you have given us. I pray right now, Lord God, that you would just be with us, that you would let us know that you are in our midst, regardless of whatever it is that we are facing. We love you, Lord, and we want to continue to worship you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.